Hello everyone. We offer this mass for James Reichard, for Peggy Disler, for Geraldine and John Matrulo, and for all St. Francis parishioners. We are going also to have a special intention for Father Pat, who is sick. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, all, and with your spirit. Today we celebrate the seventh Sunday of Easter. As we begin our Eucharist, let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contract of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. Graciously hear our supplications, O Lord, so that we will believe in the Savior of the human race, is with you in your glory, may experience as he promised, until the end of the world, his abiding presence among us, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Jesus had been taken up to heaven, the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they entered the city, they went to the upper room where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these devoted themselves with one accord to prayer, together with some women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I believe that I shall see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? I believe that I shall see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. One thing I ask of the Lord, this I seek to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I may gaze on the loveliness of the Lord and contemplate his temple. I believe that I shall see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. Hear, O Lord, the sound of my call. Have pity on me and answer me. Of you my heart speaks, you my glance seeks. I believe that I shall see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, rejoice to the extent that we share in the sufferings of Christ, so that when his glory is revealed, you may also rejoice exultantly. And if you are insulted for the name of Jesus Christ, 
blessed are you for the spirit of glory and of God rest upon you but let no one among you be made to suffer as a murderer a thief an evildoer or as an intriguer but whoever is made to suffer as a Christian should not be ashamed but glorify God because of the name the word of the Lord thanks thanks be to God hallelujah hallelujah I will not leave you orphans says the Lord I will come back to you and your heart will rejoice hallelujah hallelujah the Lord be with you a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Give glory to your Son, so that your Son may glorify you, just as you gave him authority over all people, so that your Son may give eternal life to all you gave him. Now this is eternal life, that they should know you, the only true God, the one whom you sent, Jesus Christ. I glorified you on earth by accomplishing the work that you gave me to do. Now glorify me, Father, with you, with the glory that I had with you before the world began. I revealed your name to those whom you gave me out of the world. They belonged to you, and you gave them to me, and they, kept, they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you gave me is from you, because the words you gave to me I have given to them. And they accepted them, and truly understood that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world but for the ones you have given me, because they are yours, and everything of mine is yours, and everything of yours is mine, and I have been glorified in them. And I will no longer be in the world, but they are in the world while I am coming to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today is seventh Sunday of Easter. Little by little, we're getting close to say with Pentecost next Sunday, Pentecost. And a few days ago, we had the Feast of the Ascension. Ascension. Jesus really going up to heaven, just saying that I will not leave you orphans. I will send the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete, the Spirit of Truth that will be with you to teach you and remind you everything so that whenever you remember me, you know exactly what to do. And those were really words of confidence, words of hope that Jesus left his disciples with. And today on this seventh Sunday of Easter, we continue to hear this message. Just speak to Jesus talking to his disciples. This is a message before his, he's telling them that I'm leaving you. I am going. I am going. But leaving you for a while because the Holy Spirit will be with you. The Holy Spirit will help you. We can't just picture the anxiety, the emotion, and all the feelings that went into that room when Jesus is telling the disciples that I am going, I am leaving. But as he did it on the ascension, he continues to do the same thing, saying, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Why? Because you are a gift to me. You are a gift to me. As disciples, we are a gift to Jesus, gift from the Father. You are a gift to me. So then do not be afraid. The only thing you have to do is what the disciples are doing in the upper room in the first reading. The upper room. What they're doing is to pray. Is to make sure that they are in constant connection, relationship with Jesus, with God. That's the way you find strength. And peace in Jesus Christ. And that will lead a message as we continue this novena of Pentecost. God reminds all of us, what do you do to make sure that you remain in constant relationship with Jesus? Is first of all through prayer. And for Jesus, 
though he's leaving, he will always be present. You should rejoice. And as a gift, we know, he's saying, Father, they are your gift to me. As a gift, we know, a gift is meant to bring joy. A gift is always meant to give joy. And we all, whenever you are preparing uh, for a gift, either for a birthday, either for Christmas, either for whatever celebration, you try to do something that's going to bring joy. And for Jesus saying that, they are your gift to me, Father. Meaning that we are meant to be joyful people. We are meant to bring joy. Joy in our lives. Joy wherever we go. Because we are a gift. Picture yourself as being a gift. A gift that whenever you open a gift, that brings you a smile. I had to learn, you know, something a um, few years ago, well, many years now, when I first came to the U.S. was because in my country, you don't open the gift as soon as you get it. So you have to open it in a private because that's something that's supposed to bring you joy for yourself and uh, you open it there. And when I came here, it was just like, I will get a gift and everyone is looking for me, waiting for me to open the gift. I'm just like, okay, I'm not going to open it. Father, how come you're not opening your gift? And then I had to learn the new way. I said, well, here the way you do it is you open at that point or so. Now I've learned that way. So you open a gift so that you can see the surprise and the person maybe who gave it to you wants to see the joy that is bringing into you. And that's really the gift that Jesus wants to send to all of us, to all of us. And we as Easter people today, on this Sunday, God is inviting all of us to go and be that gift. Be a gift, an Easter gift to people. So whenever people open it, that brings them joy, the surprise of joy. And that's what God wants to be for each and every one, the gift of joy. Are you ready? St. Peter says in the second reading, rejoice. Rejoice, sometimes even in the suffering of Jesus Christ. If you suffer for that, rejoice. Because you are being a part of the life of Jesus Christ. Today, my friends, God is inviting each and every one to become that true joy. God is inviting all of us to spread the joy. Are you ready to be that joy? Are you ready to be a gift? That's the challenge of this weekend. The challenge of this coming week. To be a gift wherever you go. You know, sometimes in life, you know, they know that you are coming and people are just getting ready because they don't know what you're going to bring. And they're just like, oh, be on your guard, you don't know. But we as followers of Jesus, we are meant to bring joy. Meant to bring joy because we are a gift. As we continue to prepare ourselves for the coming of the Holy Spirit, for Pentecost, may God help us this Sunday going forward to open our heart, receive his message, and to be truly a gift. Let us be gift to one another. Let us bring joy to one another. Let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The disciples devoted themselves to prayer in the upper room. Let us to join together as disciples, lifting our prayers to the Lord. For the church on earth, May God increase her in holiness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders who follow the example of Christ, may God help them in their service to their people and the kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. For Christians throughout the world who are suffering for their faith in Christ, let us pray to the Lord. For a faith community, Rejoicing as an Easter people, may God bless our effort to protect the dignity and sanctity of human life. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who have died in faith, 
May they rejoice in the light of God's glory. Let us pray to the Lord. For all our sick, especially Father Pat, let us pray to the Lord. This Mass is offered for James Reichert, Peggy Disler, Geraldine and John Matrulo, and all St. Francis parishioners. Let us pray to the Lord. And for all the prayers that we hold within the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, please hear and answer our prayers in your wisdom, according to your plan for us. We ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for the good and good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through this act of devoutness we may pass over to the glory of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight, that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, we come with passport joy. Every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they are claimed holy 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 lord god of hosts heaven and earth are full of your glory hosanna in the highest blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord hosanna in the highest you are indeed holy o lord the fount of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that it may become for us the body and blood of our lord jesus christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples to say, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples to say, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks 
that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and John our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. To him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the sap of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Father, I pray that they may be one, as we also are one. Hallelujah. Let us say our act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Hear us, O God, our Savior, and grant us confidence that through these sacred mysteries, they will be an accomplished in the body of the whole church what has already come to pass in Christ our head, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.